how to change someone's mind. Now, it's something that we've all tried to do, but most people fail at influencing others. Learning the ability to change other people's minds is integral to having success in life because you're never gonna have success in life if you're always following other people's plans. You need to learn to influence other people so that they can follow you on your path as well. So in this video, I'm gonna give you seven really powerful and actionable rules to follow when you're trying to influence another person and you're trying to change their mind. Hi, I'm Will Barron, founder of Salesman.org, where we make selling simple by breaking it down into building blocks. And with that said, let's jump in. So rule number one, go for no. So when you're butting heads with someone else and you're trying to influence their opinions, well, they know that you're trying to get them to say yes. And the longer this goes on, there's an increasing pressure as this person tries to avoid saying yes at pretty much any way they can. This continues until they reach a point where, well, they may never admit defeat at all. So as you can see on this diagram, as more and more ego and emotion is put into the conversation, well, the pressure for the individual to say no and disagree with you goes up and up and up until it reaches a point of no return where they just think, F it. And at that point, they'll never openly admit to changing their mind just to spite you. So let me ask you, have you ever lied about being wrong just so you wouldn't look bad? Well, that's you reaching the F you point and that is exactly what this graph shows. So instead, you're gonna relieve all of this pressure by influencing them to say no, instead of forcefully pushing them into saying yes, which is what they're expecting you to do. Because when someone says no, it can be an incredible relief for them. It can feel like you've taken a weight off their shoulders and it also gives them a perception of control, which in turn then allows them to drop any emotions or ego from the discussion and come back to a more logical conversation which you can win them over with. No actually means many things. For example, it could mean that you're making them feel uncomfortable, that they just don't understand you. If you're selling something, it could just mean that they don't think that they can afford it. It could mean that they need more information, that they disagree with you right now, but they could change their mind in the future. So take a moment from trying to debate the individual and ask this simple question. What about this does not work for you? Because this immediately pulls the conversation towards what's stopping them from believing you, which when you get that done is half the battle won. Next up, rule number two, don't argue. Now, when people go wrong when they try and change someone else's mind is that they follow a conversation that escalates into an argument before they get to the point which they can influence the other person. Most people assume wrongly that if they can just prove their points logically, if they can ram it home, then common sense will take over and the other person will admit that they were wrong. Now, the issue is, Emotions play a lot bigger of a role in the impact on how decisions are made than what people's logical brains do. Just because you were technically correct and you've got more supporting data and perhaps you've even got a couple of people backing you up as well, well, if you turn the conversation into an argument, the other person's ego and emotions will dominate everything they have to say and they will become blinded to your logic or rationale. Next, rule number three, win humbly. Because if every time you change someone's mind, you throw out some mad Conor McGregor level trash talk and you let them know that they were wrong and you were right and <laughs> you just hound them for it, well, they're gonna build a bigger barrier next time you both disagree. So their ego doesn't get hurt in the crossfire. The better solution is always just to act humble. Try entering the conversation by saying, hey, I might be wrong, but, and then you're gonna drop the guard of the person that you're trying to influence, which of course makes it easier to influence them. Even if you know that you are 100% correct, well, nobody likes being wrong and having it rubbed in their face. If the conversation is started with, hey, I might be wrong, then the person you're attempting to influence will be far more open to admitting that perhaps they're wrong in this instance as well. Next up, rule number four, you've got to hear people out. What the hell do we need to do to be able to have a logical adult conversation and communicate and prove our point. Well, to do this, to break through this wall of emotion, we're gonna use the technique of labeling. And let's stop here for a second and see this from the other side of the table, from the perspective of the person that we're trying to influence. Because there is nothing more frustrating than when a person is trying to put their point across and they're, they're getting passionate, they're, they're talking in an emotional language and perhaps they're, they're waving their arms around the head and, and the other person is just 
ignoring everything that they're saying. So before you can give a logical response that's gonna be taken in, you need to acknowledge this person's emotional state and let them know that you really are listening to them and you're paying attention. To do this, we're gonna calmly and respectfully repeat the emotions that the individual is sharing with us and then share it back with them, which allows us then to start to bring logic into the conversation. So, for example, we could say, we both agree that you feel X, you know, hot and bothered, emotional, angry, whatever it is. But logically, would it make sense to think about doing Y? Y being the point that you're trying to change their mind on or influence them over. Because once you hear, label, and then make the individual's emotions public to them and to the world, they tend to see that, well, they are being emotional. And they're now far more likely to listen to any logical arguments that you are making to them to try and change their opinion. Next up, rule number five, let them do the talking. Have you ever listened to someone and you instantly knew that they were lying? Often this gut feeling can come from the fact that, well, if you're not sure about the subject that you're talking about, it becomes compoundingly more difficult to confidently talk about it. Essentially, the longer you keep talking, the more and more mistakes you're gonna make. Now, most people can BS about a, a random subject for 20 seconds, relatively convincingly, but it becomes nearly impossible to do this for two, three, five minutes without fumbling or losing track of where you were and making all these mistakes. This is why when you're trying to change someone's mind, you should encourage them to speak rather than you doing all of the talking yourself. Because the more that they talk, the more likely they are to make a mistake and then they're gonna see their own slip ups and then in turn, they're gonna have their own convictions about the subject become slightly less secure in their minds. Conversely, if you start blabbering on about something you don't really understand, then you have a way higher chance of saying something stupid. And importantly, when you talk more, it makes you look way more invested in the outcome of the conversation as well. So we need to imagine this. Imagine an adult talking to a child. The adult is explaining to the child that monsters don't exist and the child is trying to influence the adult that, well, they do. Imagine just how nonchalant the adult is gonna be with their statements. They're not gonna do much talking and they're gonna be clear and precise with the little that they do say. And this sheer confidence alone translates into influence. So communicate with the individual that you're trying to change the mind of with short, confident sentences and find out why they believe what they believe and why they disagree with you. Next up, rule number six, let them be right. Because there's nothing more powerful when wanting to change someone's mind than letting the person feel like, well, they were correct all along. So rather than jumping into a conversation and aggressively saying that, you need to believe X because of Y data that I have, well, you're gonna get people on board with you far quicker and far easier by saying something more along the lines of, here is X data, what do you think it tells us? This allows the individual to see the evidence that's shaped your point of view, and that allows them to come to the correct conclusion on their own terms without you spelling it out for them. If somebody thinks this outcome is their own idea, they're clearly gonna be way more likely to embrace it. And finally, rule number seven, ask what it would take. Now, this is the final rule because it's probably not a good place to start to try and change someone's mind, but it's the best solution if you've tried everything else and nothing has stuck. I want you to ask the question, what would it take for you to change your mind? Pretty simple, right? Now, let me give you an example of how I've used this in the real world. Because I've got a friend who is religious and I'm not religious in any way whatsoever. Now, my friend have gone back and forth over religion and science and all kinds of other things as well. After a few pints down the pub on a number of occasions and we've never come to the conclusion other than he thinks he's right about everything and I think I'm right as well. So after one too many pints down the pub one afternoon, I wanted to suss out, well, did these conversations I was having with this fella, well, did they ever have the opportunity to at least open his mind a little bit on the, the subject of science versus religion? So I asked him the question, what would it take to change your mind that there is no God? And his response was, well, nothing would change my mind. And so in an instant, I knew that, well, to debate this further would be pointless, other than it makes good conversation. I will never change his mind on this subject. So before you give up on attempting to change someone's mind, throw in this final question and immediately you'll know if you're fighting a lost cause or not. And there we have it. So there are the seven rules for changing someone's mind. So just to recap very quickly, we have rule number one, go for no. I want you to disarm people by asking, 
what about this does not work for you? Questions along those lines. Rule number two, don't argue. Because when you argue, it gets people's backs up and it makes your job far harder to break through and influence them. Rule number three, win humbly. Because every word of trash talk that you say now, it makes it far harder to change this individual's mind in the future. Rule number four, hear people out. Allow people to see their own emotions and then take them off the table by asking questions like, we both agree that you feel X, Y, Z, whatever it is, but logically, would it make sense to think about doing Y? Rule number five, let them do the talking. Don't trip yourself up by talking too much. Allow them to do it to themselves instead. Rule number six, allow them to be right. Let them think it's their opinion. Give them the evidence and then ask for their opinion on the matter. Allow them to think it was their idea all along. And rule number seven, ask what would it take? This is the, the Hail Mary. If nothing else worked, ask what would it take to change your mind? And bam, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to click subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. And leave a comment below if you've got any thoughts on influence and changing other people's minds that you'd like to share with Sales Nation. And I will see you in the next video.